Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, we are from group 4 and we would like to talking about areas and issues in this course analysis. Our members of the group is me, Siti Nabila Rafifa Mufida, and then the second speaker is Dia Istikoma. The third is Esa Hairunisa. The fourth is Nur Wahida. The fifth is the, the fifth speaker is Irmawati, and the last speaker is Mafira Nordianti. So let's start the presentations. This is our materials. The first material is uh, talking about uh, classroom interactions, courtroom interactions, and children interactions. So this course analysis is a critical tool used to examine the theory of what interaction take place in the classroom situations and interactions. So uh, that uh, the thing that make it easier is the equations of three of three uh, are located in room or indoor that uh, makes uh, easier to analyze the interactions that has occurred. The example of discourse analysis in classroom interactions, uh, courtroom interactions, and children interaction is uh, are uh, such as group work, close-ended features, questionings, individual work, choral responses, responses, and etc. So the second speakers is Dia Istikoma. Time is yours. Okay, thank you. So I will explain uh, about the mass media and social media and discourse analysis, and also uh, formal and informal discourse analysis. So the first is mass media. According to uh, Dennis McHill, uh, mass media are sources that uh, bring mass communication and also nearly all research into the last is established on the principle that media have substantial effect on the business of people. Uh, example of actual discourse analysis research on mass media, uh, such as racist discourse in news reporting, language of globalization, new capital, capitalism, and etc. Next is social media. So, uh, social media applications such as uh, Twitter, uh, Facebook, and web blogs have spurred the possibilities of public communication uh, and uh, know all kinds of individual and collective actors can take part in public discourse, changing the process and structures of the public sphere. Uh, so that in the future, they can be used to answer communication, science question about online discourse. Uh, next, the second one, formal and informal setting. As you can see in the slide, there is formal and informal. The first is formal. Uh, formal language uh, is less personal than which. It is used when writing for professional or like university assignment and like your to your employees both a teacher and the students and the stranger. In informal, uh, informal language is more like casual and it is used when communicating with friends, families or your college. Uh, there are many avenues we can study through the lens of discourse, including discourse during a political debate, uh, discourse in advertising, tele television, programming, or media, interviewing, storytelling, and etc. That's all. Thank you. The third speaker is uh, Esa Harunisa. Time is yours. Okay, I will explain about the issues in discourse analysis. The first uh, issues is politeness. Politeness is having and showing good manners and respect for the feeling of others. There are four polit politeness strategies. 
First is off recording. Second is negative politeness. The third is positive politeness. And the fourth is on record building. The second uh, issues is speech act. Uh, speech act is how speakers and hearers use a language. So we have a three component of communication, the speakers, message, and the hearer. Speech act was classified by Austin into three types. The first is locutionary act, which is a physical utterance by the speakers. And the second is locutionary act, is the intended meaning of the utterance by the speakers. And the last is precautionary act, is the action that result from the locution. From the Searle's view, there are five elocutionary points. The first is directive, second is commissive, the third is representative, the fourth is declarative, and the last is expressive. That's for me, thank you. The fourth uh, speakers is Nur Wahida. Time is yours. I want to explain about the power conflict. Conflict is something in inherent in human life when interesting communicate and establish relationship with various parties in various conditions and even conflict analysis helps stakeholders to reconcile their perspective okay. are the play influence misunderstanding assumption suspicions and distrust in conflict situation, emotional can easily overpower logic and reality. It is therefore important to distance opinions from facts. Next, uh, language and gender. Language and gender it is exactly about the influence of gender difference in the way men and women communicate to each all the other here in the world. Of this score analysis, we can have the theory of women language, for example. The theory of women language the lack of in 1976, in which there are some characteristics of women language. Thank you. That's all. Yeah, thank you the, for the fifth people. Uh, will be Irmawati. Time is yours. Okay. Uh, I would explain about nonverbal communication. Nonverbal communication is the transmission of message or signal through a nonverbal platform uh, such as eye contact, facial expressions, gesture, posture, and the distance between two individuals. It includes the use of visual cues uh, such as body language, distance and cycle environments or appearance of voice and of touch. Nonverbal communication can play five roles. A repetition, contradiction, substitution, complementing and accenting. The next next is code switching. Code switching is a linguistic phenomen phenomenon which is which occurs in multilingual speech communities. Uh, the term describes the process in which a uh, communicatively competent multilingual speaker alter alternates or switches uh, usually between two language or language parties or codes during the same conversation. In example, the speaker switch switches uh, between two codes, Malay and in English within a single sentence. Uh, thank you. 
And yeah, for the last speakers is Maufira Nordianti, time is yours. Okay, I want to explain about uh, discourse markers. Uh, in practical English usage, Mikhail Swan defines a discourse markers as a word or expression which show the connection between what is said and the wider context. For him, a discourse markers is something that either connects a sentence to what's come before or after, or indicate a speaker attitude to what he is saying. So he gives three examples. Uh, the first is on the other hand, uh, the second is frankly, and the third is as a matter of fact. Um, Yale Master uh, divided discourse markers into four broad categories like interpersonal, uh, referential, structural, and cognitive. Uh, the first is interpersonal markers are used to indicate the relationship between the speaker and the listener. Example in perception like look and believe me on agreement like exactly or disagreement like I'm not sure. Uh, the second is the referential markers. Uh, usually conjunction are used to indicate the sequence, causality, and coordination between statements. Uh, example in sequence like now and then. Uh, on causality like because. On coordination like and or non-coordination like but. The third is structural markers indicate the hierarchy of conversational action at the time in which they are spoken. These markers indicate which statements the speaker believes to be most or least important. Uh, example on organization like first of all and introduction like so and summarization like in the end. Okay, the last is cognitive markers reveal the speaker's thought process. Uh, example in processing information like O, oh, in relation like O, oh, and repressing like I mean. Okay, that's all for me. Thank you. Uh, so that's all from us, group four. We hope that uh, our explanations will help you and will be useful in the future. Thank you.